Hi, this is Mark Dudley with uh, my special education interviews um, module three for EDL 853. Uh, for this assignment, um, I, am, I interviewed um, an administrator who is um, who used to be a school psychologist um, and has a lot of direct dealings with our uh, special education. Um, department today. Uh, I don't think she's directly over them, but in the past she um, has been and she's been with our school for um, about eight plus years. Um, for our special education teacher, I emailed the director of our OCP program. This is an occupational uh, certificate program, so these students won't be receiving a diploma, um, but they do on -site, they do job training, life skills, and things like that. And then for our paraprofessional, I actually interviewed, got to interview our one of our speech um, teachers um, who not only services our special ed department, but services students throughout the school and throughout the district. Um, so I thought that this would be, um, these would be three good people uh, to interview that would have, um, you know, an opinion and some dealings with the special ed department. Um, as far as the first slide goes, as far as child fine procedures, all three of them were very knowledgeable of what it takes to be um, serviced by special ed. Um, obviously, since we're at a high school, our administrator, um, her answer was more tailored toward a lot of the information that we get and has been fed to us from previous schools. Um, but she was aware of preschool early prevention programs um, and then even, um, even at the high school level, there are some students that are either being evaluated for the first time or being reevaluated uh, for the possibility of services. I would say our special education uh, teacher was very aware of the early evaluations that take care in a lot of the three and 4K preschool programs. Um, and then um, our paraprofessional, our speech teacher, um, you know, she mentioned that a lot of Parent, uh, that either parents or teachers can request these evaluations um, and that most of these um, special ed um, services are identified at a very early age. Um, as far as the most challenging part of the role, um, our administrator was talking about making sure that uh, these services are provided to our students. Um, in the past, she was over the special ed department and getting that communication rolling um, at the beginning of the year and at semester change to make sure teachers were aware of the accommodations that these students needed um, and to get that information out in a timely fashion. Um, she says in the past, sometimes teachers haven't gotten these accommodations three or four weeks into the semester. And once they get it, it's really hard for them to implement. So the biggest challenge was them getting that information out early on so the teachers were aware and those services were getting um, getting to those students so that they could um, get the type of education that they need. Um, our special education teacher, um, her biggest challenge was being present in class. Uh, like I said, she's the director of the program, and not only do, does she deal with the students that are on campus, um, she deals with a lot of meetings with students that will be coming uh, to campus that are either at the middle school or transferring in. So she um, is tied up in meetings, and a lot of times it would be the fall or spring where all these meetings happen. And a lot of times her instructional assistants have to basically take over her class um, because she's in and out of these meetings with a lot of the, um, the paperwork and the meetings that have to take place. Um, and then our speech teacher, her biggest challenge is making sure um, to communicate and schedule uh, time out of class for, her, for the services that she provides. Um, she realizes that it is a challenge uh, to have to get students out of instructional time and so working with teachers to make sure um, that the students are still getting their services but not missing uh, information that's a priority in that class. As far as the most rewarding part of their job, um, uh, our administrators cited the relationships that they build, especially with our uh, unified 
um, PE athletes. We have a lot of, we have a really strong unified athletic program with special ed and a lot of these students are in our school for four or five years and watching them kind of um, develop and bud into their personalities um, and really see that pride show through through uh, athletics. She says that's always one of her highlights of the year is when we host the special ed uh, the special Olympics at our school and to see these athletes really come to life and these uh, personalities really come out. She said that was kind of like the highlight of of her year uh, for our special uh, special ed teacher. Um, she um, cited when these students find jobs. Uh, for example, she told the story of a student that has recently uh, moved on and he has been promoted several times at a local um, dealership. He works um, in the auto body and the mechanic shop and um, he actually has been promoted several times and for him to be um, to graduate out of the program and to get in a position like that uh, it makes her happy and she said she still gets her oil changed um, from that shop just because he works there um, and then for our speech teacher her biggest uh, thing is seeing students place out of levels um, like I said she deals with um, various students whether it's special ed or not but she likes when they um, are are placed out of her service where these students have worked so hard or they reach a new level that um, at the beginning you know the you know your first year she worked with them they didn't see possible so seeing these students achieve and use the services that she provides is really kind of like the highlight that she experiences um, advice on supervision of special education staff. Um, our administrator, again, has had um, the joy of hiring people to be instructional assistants and things like that. And she just said you have to overcoach uh, and overcommunicate the expectations early on. Um, special ed obviously is a very uh, is a is a career that is almost a calling. And she said you have to find those people that are passionate about it, but you also have to overcoach and over. Uh, communicate the expectations so that they not only take it serious but they understand uh, the legal ramifications that deals with uh, special ed and making sure these students are educated in the proper way. Um, as far as uh, our special ed, again she's always looking um, you know instructional assistants don't always stay for the longest time so she's always looking uh, for instructional assistance and you know she said I couldn't do my job without them and mentioned you know her having to be out of the classroom and um, you know she her goal is to help them grow in the profession several of her instructional assistants have gone on to um, become special ed teachers um, so that's something that she helps them do is make sure that they continue um, to grow in that profession um, and then our speech teacher um, was like, don't get distracted. She said uh, she's had experiences where she's walked into uh, special ed classrooms with an instructional assistant and uh, places kind of gone haywire. Um, so she was, her, her advice is just, you got to stay on top of it. You never know what's going to happen um, and you, you got to be alert and on top of the situation. <clears throat> as far as how to work effectively with parents, um, our administrator said you got to listen. You got to be empathetic. You got to understand um, what you know, where they've walked and, and and where they've been. You know, as far as putting yourself in their shoes. And so, listen, be supportive, um, understand that we can't do everything for them, um, but we'll do the best of our ability to get uh, these students the education they need, whether it's at our school or in another uh, school in our district. Um, for our special ed teachers, she just said communicate early and often. Um, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, just establish communication so when it's needed, the parents will be there to support. Um, and then for our uh, professional, she actually tries not to communicate with parents unless it's necessary. She thinks that a lot of the communication should go through the school. She doesn't ever, I mean, go through the, uh, the teacher. She doesn't ever want to become like the expert, so to say, even though she is. She wants a lot of that communication um, to come through the teacher and she will support in any type of um, role necessary, but she wants to uh, have all the reports and reporting to go through the teacher just so that um, 
the parents have a relationship with the teacher and not just with her, which I thought was a really good, uh, you know, kind of a chain of command, so to say. I thought that was really good. And then how to work with regular teachers. Again, uh, the administrator really talking about getting the information out early. Um, we mentioned earlier that sometimes accommodations don't get out uh, three or four weeks in. And again, that's gotten better, but it happens sometimes. And so um, just make sure that um, they communicate very early um, and let them understand that, you know, these are, these are not, um, these are not optional, they're requirements. Um, and then especially a teacher kind of echo that, uh, communicate early and often, try to get the information out. Um, and if there's any meetings or any uh, things that, that require the special, the regular ed teacher to do things that you get that information out early, get it on the, get it on the calendar. And so that you're not rely, you're not asking someone to do something last minute. Um, and then uh, as far as the teach, uh, speech teacher, she takes a lot of people out of class. So again, it was communicating the need, communicating the schedule. And so that it becomes routine um, and not out of whack for the teacher. That way expectations are set that, you know, Susie's going to be out of class uh, on Tuesdays at 1030 uh, every week. And so it kind of comes routine and it's not something that's sporadic. Um, as far as advice for first year administrators, our administrator, again, she's dealt with the program. She, um, she said just spend some time getting to know the ins and outs of the program. Listen to special education teachers, find out what they need, find out uh, what their issues are, and just learn about the programs. Um, it's very important to um, become an advocate early on for that. Um, our special ed teacher was talking about building relationships, making sure that you're there to support when things are good um, and bad. Just go ahead and establish that relationship. Um, and then the paraprofessional is just, just get to know your staff. There's a lot of instructional assistants from time to time, and you got to be able to, it's good to know their names um, and and good to know their story so that if issues arise that, you know, those lines of communication are already open. As far as the role of the special ed teacher and principal, um, our administrator was role to support one another, provide the best possible educational experience as possible. Um, I've heard that word a ton through these interviews is support each other. Um, as far as our special ed te uh, teacher, she was, you know, teachers provide students with the best learning exp experience possible. And again, the principal's there to support the program, whether it's um, time, resources, um, you know, be there. Okay. And again, the uh, paraprofessional kind of echo that we're just trying to provide the best educational experience possible for these students. Um, characteristics of expiring principals, all three. Um, use again the word supportive and then all three use um, being aware and always um, available um, being a good listener being active in the classroom were words that were used and again it was um, being around being aware of going on and um, being active in the program as far as the reflection on the sign I thought it was very uh, very good uh, all three um, um, reminded me that I must be willing to grow and learn that special ed is changing. It changes um, every time you get a new student. Um, so don't expect things to be normal. Um, expect things out of the ordinary and that it changes often. Um, you know, all three uh, mentioned of being an advocate for the program now as I develop into a leader and that way I'm more knowledgeable when things, um, when I become a principal or an admin. And then Personally, I just have a lot to learn as far as the laws and things like that. There's a lot of things that I don't know. Okay, if evaluation again. I felt like all of these were very, all these um, professionals were very knowledgeable. I think all of them do a great job. I think they're very passionate about what they do. Um, and you can tell that they communicate uh, on a lot of different levels. And then projections. I need to become more educated. Um, I need to become an advocate 
and I need to become aware of the services that our school provide and that we provide at the district level. Hope you enjoyed my video.